Balloon's Tower Defense 6 has a lot of war crimes. Between sacrificing souls to the vengeful sun god, using chemical warfare with extreme prejudice, or exploding pineapples, there's a lot of reasons that you, as a primate commander, can violate the law. But what if, for whatever godforsaken reason, you wanted to beat this game with only war criminals? Well, today we're going to do just that. But first rules, and I have to ask you something extremely personal. Last video, there were quite a few commenters who couldn't get past the 44 second mark because of crippling ADHD, and kept asking questions that I literally answer, not even a minute into the video. I don't know if you need to, like, sit on your hands or something to get through this segment, but I plead that you do. Firstly, as I've stated on the last Balloons Can You Beat video, the definition of Can You Beat is extremely loose. If your definition is Medium Logs Challenge Editor, then sure. If your definition is every map in the game on every difficulty, fuck no. So to aim for a middle ground and to put myself through more torment than is actually asked of me, I decided to do every intermediate map on Chimps with the exception of Bonarius Prime and Shoots. They are 100% doable. I just do not enjoy their existence and they make me very bitter. Secondly, the overall challenge is to beat the map with everything on screen being a war criminal. For a good example on how this can very easily change my strategy, let's take Archmage. Between 502 and 520, 502 is most of the time better, but since that top path only gets its war criminal status by Archmage, it can be a bit of a gamble, but if I go into the middle path I can skip out on that gamble entirely for a safer yet less rewarding play. There's a lot of towers with a dilemma similar to this, either encouraging or flat out requiring certain cross paths. Thirdly, I will not be answering questions about war crimes in this video. As much as I like some of you, answering literal hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of comments is something I'm not willing to do. To help with that, I could have done some YouTube hype man bullshit, like, yeah, dude, make sure to watch the war crime videos and like and subscribe and comment to get me more ad revenue because I have no personality and like to copy and paste the same old effort videos every day. But instead, I'll play through that helpful graph I made last video at excessive speeds and funky beats. Pause if you need to, here you go. Alrighty, on with the video, starting with a pretty easy map in balance. For this, I went for Adora because of the blood sacrifice ability. It's the only possible way to dispose of those darn law-abiding soldiers, so any map where you have to start with Dart Monkey spam, you're going to have to use Adora. That's not the case in this map, but I decided to go with it anyways due to this map's admittedly low surface area. I did a pretty basic start of attack shooter in the middle, which I then upgraded a few times to allow me to save up for a Dora and a wizard I would upgrade into the bottom path. Let me be entirely blunt with you. This video realistically could have also been titled, Can You Beat Bloons TD6 Buying Prince of Darkness Every Map? And this video almost would have gone the exact same way. I couldn't tell you if it's confirmation bias, but it seems like the Prince of Darkness absolutely shreds every intermediate map. And I don't know if that's just me, but either way you're going to see a lot of him. After I got my first Necromancer, I then upgraded my Tack Shooter into a Hot Shots, bought a third Wizard which would become another Necromancer later, and I was able to save up enough money to buy my Prince of Darkness at round 54. This got me all the way to round 81, in which I purchased my next tier 5, a preemptive strike submarine. This immensely helps with the bad at round 100, as well as the rounds in the early to late 90s with a large amount of smaller blimps. At this point all I needed to do was sacrifice my sentry expert in hot shots for a super glue in a snowstorm, then one last necromancer which allowed me to easily beat this map and move on to encrypted. Encrypted had almost the same exact endgame plan as Balance, although the early game was a bit more fucky since you have to put down a tack shooter, then carefully time another tack shooter to get through the early rounds, but once you get your open, everything goes uphill. I bought a Ninja Monkey for, well, pretty much no reason. I bought him to deal with the first camo, but since Oban had his bush ability by this point, there was no reason to. 
In retrospect, it was unnecessary, but the Ninja Monkey is decent enough, so I don't feel too much regret. I then bought another Necromancer Monkey, upgraded my Ninja into the top path as well as the bottom path for Caltrops, and yet again I purchased the Prince of Darkness followed by a Preemptive Strike. Then a Grandmaster Ninja alongside a top path Alchemist because... I mean, do I really need to explain that? and it got me all the way to round 98 where I started to experience some difficulties. I had to purchase a Spike Storm alongside the White Hot Spikes upgrade to help deal with that round, which took a few attempts, but fortunately after that, 99 was dealt with ease and the bad was no problem at all. And we get to move on to Bazaar, which was the first map to really start giving me a lot of trouble. For this I had to bust out Adora because starting with Dart Monkeys is by far the easiest and most consistent start. And once I got past the early rounds, I bought a Necromancer with a few monkey subs by their own respective quadrants with advanced intel and twin guns. Which alongside a few blood sacrifices got me far enough to purchase my Prince of Darkness, and I have a feeling you're starting at the point when I said this thing will be used a ton. Afterwards, I purchased a Summon Phoenix because I was incredibly close to being able to purchase a Wizard Lord Phoenix, but I ran into a wall and instead had to opt into purchasing a brand new wizard to upgrade into the Archmage. Although this was great on paper, in the mid to late 90s I had to constantly purchase support for my monkeys because of my scuffed composition, including a First Strike, two Sabo Ninjas, a bottom path glue on the top left to help deal with 99, and a whole bunch of dead dart monkeys. This culminated in round 100 in which I had to do an extremely specific set of actions in order to beat the round, which took about 20 minutes to find the proper order. I had to start off by sacrificing my bottom path glue, sacrifice my Prince of Darkness once the bad got to a certain point, and once Adora hit level 20, immediately use both of her abilities, purchase an MYP Mauler and use a first strike near the very end. This defense, rather unsurprisingly, didn't even get past round 101. But by the end, I was so ecstatic to finally beat this fucking map that I didn't care if it wasn't done in the most graceful way. I was just glad it was over. After Bazaar was a map that was pretty simple but still took a few attempts, Adora's Temple. For this, I went for two sub start into Oban and a Wizard Monkey but this time I went for the top path to get my Archmage, which alongside a stronger Stimulant Alchemist was a very effective defense. Other than the Neva Mist Darts I purchased to help deal with the Purple Balloons, this defense was more than enough to get me to round 68 where I purchased my Archmage which completely shredded everything. It carried me extremely easily until round 89, in which I decided the next monkey I was going to buy would be the Wizard Ward Phoenix. But unlike Bazaar, I was actually able to purchase it, and these two wizards completely decimated everything that dared stand in its path. The only towers I had to purchase from this point onwards was a Ninja Sabo to help slow down balloons for the Wizard Lord ability, and a First Strike to more effectively deal with the bad, but overall it was still incredibly simple, and I'm just glad I was able to finally use my Fiery Chicken of Wrath. Afterwards was Spring Springs, which went fantastic for a time. A Monkey Buccaneer was a surprisingly decent start that had a bunch of great upgrades to transition to, as long as I got my Fiery Grapes of Doom, which, I mean, it's pretty solid, so it's not too much to ask for. And then I went for a pretty traditional Death Star comp with Oban and a bunch of Pop Plus Druids with Heart of Thunder to establish their War Criminal status, and with a few Alchemists for support in a shitty yet mandatory Spike Factory cross path, this did extremely well excluding the odd hiccup that a few ground zeros couldn't solve, and then round 100 happened. So let me give you the scenario. Oban had to do one thing in order to easily beat this map. Plant all of his trees and bushes in the fucking path that the big, giant blimp was going through. Of course, Oban failed elementary school, and this was a bit too hard, so it took me 30 minutes of retrying, spamming the abilities over and over again before Oban was like, Oh, there's a blimp there! Ha! <laughs> Silly me, and he actually fucking did it. And what's better yet, once I beat the map, I couldn't help but notice something. There's a glue gunner here, who doesn't have corrosive glue, nor does he have super glue. Meaning, guess what? I had to do it all over again! Woohoo! Good for me! 
I'll spare the details because I had to change a grand total of one non-essential upgrade, but it wasn't an enjoyable experience. At all. Tangent aside though, it was time for carts and darts, which was painfully easy. I did a ninja monkey start with seeking shurikens, caltrops, and double shots alongside Gwendolyn, which covered my early game extremely well. This was more than enough for me to save up for an artillery battery, which, although it's an upgrade that I have to use a really poor cross path, is still fucking insane. So recently it got buffed to finally have an ability, and the micro that you can now do with it is insane. And as a StarCraft player, I like micro. I like it a lot. With no other additions than a necromancer for moral support, I was able to micro this mortar all the way to round 75, in which I bought an Inferno Ring. Now to be blunt, I got a lot of flack for my tax shooter placements in the Can You Beat Without Monkeys video, which to be fair, most of them were placed terribly to deal with rounds faster. I have no fucking excuse for this. I'd say that displacement should be a war crime, but that's kind of the entire point. So yeah. Despite this complete atrocity, it still does a ton of damage, and later on in the map I bought my Prince of Darkness, an MOAB Eliminator, I beat carts and darts, and I get to forget about my problems in life, please don't bring this up. Downstream was up next, and it's a very similar story to the last. Opting in for a substart into Gwendolyn instead of a ninja, which with very minimal upgrades and micro got me to round 33 in which I decided to go for my 9,000th Necromancer thus far. Ah! Fuck, that was a- fuck. Sorry I got jump scared by a spider, if this is somehow still in the video. Anyways, Necromancer, Boontonium Reactor, two snipers, woo. Then it was time for my hero artillery battery to return. With a small amount of micro, this Giga Chad got me far enough to purchase my Dark Champion. And by that point, there really wasn't a whole lot that could stop me. The only other tower I bought was a super glue for stalling and support, but with that global dark shift there really wasn't a whole lot that could get in the way of my inevitable victory. So afterwards was moon landing, in which I went for a wizard monkey start with guide and magic, and alongside a spider monkey- spider monkey. Nope, I'm, I'm done. I never even wanted to do this job anyway, I want to be a fucking astronaut. So unsurprisingly, NASA had rejected my application because apparently being a Diamond Terran player is not a good application. So here I am again. I bought a Sniper Monkey and Striker Jones. The early game was the hardest part of this, but once I got my Striker and my Mortar, I was pretty happy. First I went for the Artillery Battery start, which was some micro got me far enough to purchase a Blue Incineration. And it's a Blue Incineration. On Moon Landing with Striker Jones support. It killed everything. I then bought a super glue, gave both my mortars their very own personal alchemist for whatever reason, upgraded my artillery battery into a pop and all for the fuck of it, then a spike storm for round 100, and I beat moon landing without too much of a hassle. Afterwards was Haunted, in which I went for a pretty expected submarine start into Brickle. Upgraded that first submarine straight into a Boontonium reactor, then I bought a destroyer for extra damage, and then about a billion ballistic missile submarines and another Boontonium reactor just in case for those pesky camo balloons. This alongside a few well-timed brickle abilities got me far enough to purchase an Inferno Ring, which just like carts and darts was placed in a pretty mediocre position, but fuck it, it's an Inferno Ring. And then I remembered, I'm missing something. It's been like two seconds since we've seen the Prince of Darkness, get him back in here. This dealt with everything pretty well, up until round 98, which was pretty difficult, so I bought a Shattering Shells to help deal with those fortified BFBs. Round 99 required a Ninja Sabo, and then round 100 was pretty simple, only requiring a few well-placed Mega Mines to deal with the bad. And with that, we beat Haunted and can move on to Firing Range. Yet again, I went for a Ninja Monkey start into Gwendolyn. Although I will say there were absolutely better heroes to utilize because I thought I could put Gwendolyn here, but she's too dummy thick and can't get on the fucking bench, so guess what? She's down here. Anyways, I went for another Caltrops Ninja on the other bench to set up some helpful advanced intel subs, and then, 
You'll never believe this controversial pick for Tier 5. It's something I'm sure you are dearly missing. The Prince of Darkness. Woo, what a twist. This completely unexpected powerhouse from left field got me far enough to upgrade one of my subs into a sub commander. There's a Twitch simp joke to be made, but sadly this is a tier 5 sub instead of a tier 3 sub. So I guess my OnlyFans is delayed another day. After the sub commander was the Dom commander. Then I got two relentless glues about the wrong fucking cross path again. Uh, is what I would say if I was a complete idiot. Yeah, there we go. I'm the first person in the world to get not only one, but two vengeful sun gods and chimps. I'm just that good. And, uh, don't look into this any further, I have personal sources that are very reliable. Anyways, to sidetrack from that, it's Cracked Time. As in, that's the name of the map. I endorse many things, like violence. Crack is not one of those things. Anyways, I went for a start almost the exact same as Moon Landing, starting off with a Guided Magic Wizard into a Sniper to help deal with some bigger balloons or balloons that are close to escaping, and then I busted out Biker Bones, started upgrading my Wizard Monkey into the top path, which is a pretty big gamble, but it paid off, and with only an MOAB Mauler and some top path submarines for support, I was able to afford my Gandalf, which by the way, is canon. I then gave Gandalf his very own drug dealer, and upgraded my Mauler into a prestigious Eliminator. And these two completely ass-blasted blimps straight to Brazil. But ceramics were still a bit of an issue, so I had to call in Gandalf's emo drug-abusing cousin for help. And then the rest of the map was fairly simple, ending off with a pretty massive bank of $40,000 remaining. Then it's time for Stream Bed, with yet another wizard start, but this time with the added flavor of Monkey Sub. Got Myobin and his ruthless gang of Sith Lords, and in a controversial twist nobody could have guessed, he's back. From this point on, I'm actually not even going to mention him. Only three things in this existence are infinite. Human stupidity, the universe, and Davy's overwhelming addiction and reliance on necromancy. It's starting to become a bit of a problem. Anyways, Redacted got me far enough to purchase a Bloon Cineration. Which, due to this map's pretty long length, gave me some pretty neat micro-potential, and it got me all the way to round 99. In which I had to buy two spike storms to help deal with the round. And yet again, the bad was an annoyance requiring Oban to do the bare minimum of not sending his trees and brambles 1500 miles away from the giant skeleton blimp inbound to slaughter us mercilessly. It took 20 minutes, but Oban finally discovered... He has eyes. It's a Christmas mirror rake. I had to go for an oddly specific start of Monkey Sub and Tack Shooter, which although not a traditional start by any means, actually did fantastically, and I didn't have to rely on Adora sending Dart Monkeys to Brazil. After a few rounds I put Oban by whatever the fuck this thing is supposed to be, upgraded my initial Tack Shooter into a Hot Shots to give it that feisty war criminal spice, turned my initial sub into a Triple Darts, Bought an entirely new sub to turn into an AP darts, and then a spike factory with a really weird cross path that, I've been told multiple times isn't good, but it's mandatory, so... Yeah. Am I missing something here? I don't think I am, probably one of those weird looking eye things that people get. Strange. I then got my perma spike and gave it its very own case of alcoholism. I think the concept of throwing beer at a machine is questionable at best but goddammit I can't question its results. The Machine God is with us, and to help appease the omni -Sia, I bought an MOAB Eliminator to help deal with some of the bigger blimps. And up until round 98, this did good. And then I went for the classic random bullshit go strategy, including a shattering shells and enough Australians to almost fight back the emus. Then I beat round 100 and moved on to the last map of the video, Spice Islands. For this, I went for a monkey sub start, followed by Brickle, as well as an early sniper to help deal with some early camo rounds and leads to save up for... something, I'm sure. I for gore. Anyways, whatever it was must have been really good, because it soloed the game up until round 87. But by then, I had enough money to buy my monkey sub and monkey dom, which pretty much shredded through everything else with ease. I then bought an energizer because fuck it. Why not have every tier 5 sub at the same time? 
And for a rather anticlimactic end to this video, I beat Spice Islands, and hence I sort of beat Bloom's TD6 with Prince of Darkness and sometimes other monkeys for moral support. That's the title of the video, right? I don't know. For a last note, thank you to my patrons for funding my sick, crippling necrophilia addiction, and fuck Bonarius Prime and Shoots. As always, stay frosty, my friends. Good day.